Yikes, it's cold out. Do you know how far your EV can go when it's this cold out? Well, don't worry, I got you guys covered because today with my winter range cheat sheet, you'll know exactly how far you can go the next time you take your EV out on a winter road trip. Hey everybody, welcome to Cars Jubilee. My name is Victor and today you join me in my Genesis GV60 as we talk about this winter range cheat sheet. Now this is going to work for you if you have an Ionic 5, an EV6, or a GV60. So let's get to it. This cheat sheet that I've put together is essentially a compilation from all the YouTube content creators that have Ionic 5s, EV6s, and GV60s. Now they all did range tests in different conditions, different weather conditions, different speeds. And what I did is I tried to put it all together as well as put it together with some of my own numbers and provide this for you so that the next time you go on a road trip and you're thinking, hmm, am I going to make it? You can look at this chart before you set off and know, okay, roughly what I should expect. And hopefully that helps you gauge, do you need to make a stop or will you even make it? So before we proceed, big shout out to all the content creators that did these range tests because a lot of these tests take hours and hours and hours where they drive from a full charge all the way down to zero. So shout out to you guys for doing all the hard work. Now on to the numbers. Now I will be keeping these numbers up for the rest of the video. I also have a converted one for Celsius and kilometers. So you'll see these two kind of rotate back and forth so that you know if you ever need to come back to the video, you know this will just be always up so you can reference it at any time. As you can see in this chart, going faster really depletes your range very quickly. If you look at that, 80 mile per hour column, you'll see that I don't have any results because I don't go that fast. When I'm on these EV road trips, I'm usually in the 55, 65, maybe I'll hit 70 for a little bit, but I never touch 80 miles per hour because of what it does to my range. Now, if you look at that one reading that's there for the Ionic 5, that was done by the content creator Battery Life, and he averaged two miles per kilowatt going 80 miles per hour while it was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And that's how we managed only 155 miles of range. So go slower, it makes a huge difference. And a fun fact is if you look at the GV60 performance chart, this is going to give you kind of a rough idea of what it's going to be like if you try to own an EV6 GT or an Ionic 5N during the winter with cold weather except that those two will be even worse so for example if you live near freezing temperatures in the winter and you're going 75 miles per hour you're definitely getting less than 170 miles of range you might only get 150 miles of range at that speed and that temperature Another thing to note here with my Ionic 5 is that it's an all-wheel drive limited. If you have an all-wheel drive non-limited or non-top spec model, that means you're running the 19-inch wheels. So you would actually get better range and better efficiency than I did in my testing. And I would say for the most part, most of these tests were done with the top spec with 20-inch wheels. So again, if you have the 19s, you should be able to get better range and efficiency. And if you have the rear wheel drive model, you would definitely get better range and efficiency. I don't have the EV6 listed here specifically, but that's because it's going to match pretty closely to what you get in the Ionic 5. And in fact, some of these numbers are actually pulled from an EV6 content creator who goes by the driver download and he did some really great informational videos that I was able to pull some really helpful numbers from. Hopefully this is easy for everyone to understand and use. Figure out how cold it is outside, then look at how many miles you can go based on the speeds provided. Now keep in mind, this is not a perfect chart. 
Uh, this is meant to be a guide. Let's say it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside and you need to go 200 miles in one shot without charging. Well, according to this chart, you'll make it there going 65 miles per hour. But this chart is based on best case scenario. Let's visit what I mean by best case scenario. Maybe it's a calm day, so there is no wind to speak of. Maybe you're driving alone or maybe one other passenger with no luggage, with an empty trunk or empty boot. Maybe the road is relatively flat and maybe you've got the heat set to 70 degrees Fahrenheit on low fan setting. That's best case scenario. And that's essentially what you would need in order to achieve these kinds of numbers on this chart. Now, if you're driving your car with four or five people, trunk is completely full of luggage, the heat is blasting, fan speed on high, maybe you're driving uphill against the wind, well, you're not gonna get close to these numbers. So for this 200 mile theoretical trip at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I'd probably aim to go under 65 miles per hour so that you have a buffer, you know, maybe 55 to 60 miles per hour. Now, if you'll be traveling on a highway or an interstate where the speed limit is higher, maybe 70, well then going these lower speeds just isn't possible. So that means maybe you won't make it there in one shot. Maybe you do have to figure out how to charge somewhere along the way. Well, if you do have to look for a charging station, you don't necessarily need a level three DC fast charging or Electrify America station. You could probably get by with a level two destination charger somewhere at a mall, um, at a grocery store. A lot of these places have them. You just have to look for them. And maybe you only need a couple kilowatt hours of battery to get to where you need to go. If that's the case, you could plug into a level two charger for about an hour and have enough to make it the rest of the way. Another solution is to maybe turn onto a back road where you can go a little slower for a stretch of your trip, just so you can get a little better efficiency for a stretch and then hop back onto the interstate or highway and do 70 miles per hour. That might be enough to get you there. Now, I, I do plan on doing a follow-up video separately where I'll provide some winter range tips and tricks. So keep an eye out for that. But I still need some help from you guys. Some of these numbers are proven, but not all of them. The ones that are not proven are basically extrapolated from the numbers that are proven. So in a sense, some of these are best guesses. So what that means is if you plan on doing a road trip soon, or maybe you've been doing road trips and you have data to share, well, let us know in the comment section below. We'll need to know your average speed, your average temperature, and the average efficiency. And then with the information that you guys provide, if needed, I'll come back and I'll update this list and do another video. Now, one last thing to note is that this chart, as I said before, is not a perfect chart. It's not a perfect cheat sheet. And that's because all of us tested in different circumstances, different situations. For example, some of these tests were 50 mile loops just over and over and over again until they ran out of battery. And that means that they're hopping off the highway, sitting at a light, hopping back on the highway. There's some local road driving factored in. And for some of these guys, they're trying to get as close as possible to 0% charge on these range tests. So then they do a couple extra loops of local driving at the very end. And that will skew the numbers. There's also some scenarios where they just did one giant loop and maybe they had five, 10% battery remaining. Well, then they just used the miles per kilowatt and kind of averaged everything out. And then there's also my range test. Now, back when I was still playing basketball, I was driving every Saturday to a gym that was about half an hour away. And during that drive, I would do 20 miles out of pure highway driving and then another 20 miles back pure highway driving. Now there was local driving involved, but what I did was I reset my trip meter as soon as I got on the highway. And then I took the reading before I got off. And then on the way back, I did the same thing. I reset it as soon as I got on the highway and then I stopped it or I took the reading right before I got off the highway. So my highway range tests are purely 100% highway driving. And in fact, my average speed that I'm using is literally the miles driven divided by the time. Is 
and the average speed that I'm showing is actually the time driven. That's how I come up with my range test speed. For others, they said, oh, well, I tried to drive about 75 miles per hour for most of it, so I'm gonna call it a 75, 75 miles per hour range test. So as you can see, these range tests were done by different people, different parameters, so nothing's perfect. But hopefully with your help, we can make it better. But in any case, I hope this chart helps you so that when you go on your next EV road trip and maybe it's really, really cold outside, you have a better gauge of what to expect. That wraps this video up. As always, please like and subscribe. Subscribing will help grow my channel and allow me to do more with it as time goes on. Anyways, see you guys in the next one.